welcome to today's lecture welcome to my channel that is professor lpt food technology now we are talking in a series on the milk and milk products specifically these lectures are suitable for undergraduate students of veterinary science and dairy technology dairy science food science food technology and all the pg students of all these disciplines so in this series today i am going to talk about spoilage of milk so this is about spoilage of milk and milk products i am going to cover in two different topics in part 1 i am going to talk only about spoilage of milk for understanding this first we need to learn about the composition of milk and physico chemical properties of milk that will help understand this topic and this understanding of spoilage of milk is very important for actual learning about the application of preservation methods so in this lecture i am going to talk different aspects of spoilage the background the cause the different process biochemicals and mostly about microbes which are mainly responsible for the spoilage of milk and milk products here first let us understand about the major causes of food spoilage so this is in general for the spoilage of all kind of foods the main causes like physical which could be due to the temperature effect or due to the relative humidity the light and other mechanical damages then there is chemical spoilage or cause that is sometime due to the normal enzymes present in the food may be due to non enzymatic reactions which may lead to oxidation and rancidity and sometimes some chemical interaction also can cause spoilage but the most important for spoilage in modern food processing is the microorganisms these microorganisms can be normally they are in the food or it may escape the process of heating etc or sometime it may come to the food in the process of developing the product or after processing through contamination so these microorganisms could be bacteria yeast and molds and i am going to focus more on this aspect the major spoilage is due to these microbes and sometime other reasons which are less common and easily avoidable those are due to insects rodents animals birds etc here let us understand how food spoilage occurs as i mentioned earlier the microorganism is the most responsible so bacteria yeast and mold they wish to grow and multiply for that they need the energy and other nutrients so they work on the food item and break down the food item to utilize the nutrients and in that process it cause undesirable changes or it produces different metabolites so that metabolites causes different kind of undesirable effect either in odor or taste or smell etc and that's how food gets spoiled that is the major cause of spoilage sometime i said enzymes that is the inherent enzymes in the food so if the processing is not to destroy all the enzymes then these enzymes can work and cause undesirable changes another important is the oxidation this oxidation can happen mainly due to the presence of air or due to the other oxidative reactions so in this cases it produces again different kind of oxidative products which gives the smell or undesirable effect on the food quality and we will talk more details on oxidation only in post graduate classes and the light exposure many time light cause undesirable effect and cause discoloration or sometime even it acts as a pro oxidant and cause oxidation so these are the major cause or uh, for spoilage of different kind of food now we will focus more on microbial spoilage in this some of the important aspect we should understand is the signs of spoilage of different types of food so that can be different depending on the kind of food and its composition then significance of microorganism that is the microorganism plays a major role and for different food different kind of microorganism prefer to grow as per their nature and specificity important food spoilage bacteria we are going to talk more in every different kind of spoilage there are different kind of bacteria involved that we are going to discuss specifically in more details 
then end products from microbial metabolism of food nutrients so most of the microbes utilize the nutrients and produce metabolites those end products many time give the bad color or odor or smell or taste and that's the cause of spoilage and sometimes indicators of microbial spoilage so we can measure it by chemical or other microbial parameters like we can see the ph or the erv or the eh or oxidation reduction potential or sometime by microbial load or some specific indicator organism that can help us understand the microbial spoilage in the other side there are factors affecting the spoilage of milk in which there is intrinsic factor and extrinsic factor intrinsic factor means the factors inside the food like the ph of the food or oxidation reduction potential or nutrient contents of the food or presence of any a natural antimicrobial agents or the other factors similarly in the extrinsic factors there are the outside situation or environment like the uh, the storage temperature then the atmosphere like relative humidity and other factors also plays very important role in case of spoilage of any food or in case of milk as we are going to learn about the spoilage of milk so briefly i wish to review the characteristics of milk which you have to learn in other lectures previously so milk is an excellent culture medium for many kinds of microorganisms it is high in moisture as you know the water content will be 87 88% nearly neutral in ph the ph will be around 6.4 6.5 which is very suitable for microbial growth mostly and it is rich in all kind of foods or nutrients which is required for the microbial growth and multiplication so in it it has got very good source of sugar fat citrate and other nitrogenous compounds from the proteins or amino acids and it has also the vitamins and minerals so altogether it's an ideal media for the growth of microbes so if there is microbe then it will grow and it will cause spoilage depending on the condition of the milk or the storage situation and other things like i said the external factors in which i missed that is the oxygen permeability or packaging condition and other contamination plays important roles so depending upon the storage condition and the contamination the type of organism grows will vary and accordingly the spoilage will be different which we are going to learn slowly later here briefly we will understand the spoilage process in case of milk so as you know the milk undergoes fermentation due to the microbes so the milk constituents great broken because of the microbial activity or due to the microbial enzymes the 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 milk composition get changed especially the lactic lactic acid formation so there is lactose so microbes utilize this lactose as the source of energy and it produces lactic acid that's the common fermentation so that leads to curdling of milk when the lactic acid is quite high whereas there are there can be abnormal fermentation sometime which can produce gases or gassiness ropiness sometime due to the different kind of microbes they may break the proteins and causes proteolysis sometime different enzymes will break the lipids and cause lipolysis sometime there will be sweet curdling so without acid production which all these details we are going to learn and sometime there will be mixed fermentation fermentation can be homo fermentation hetero fermentation so some organism they independently produce lactic acid only one kind of product so that is called homo fermentation sometime hetero fermentation simultaneously different organism can grow and different micro uh, metabolites will come that causes both acid production gas production sometime the coliforms are very important for that in the right side you can see a brief process that is due to microbial attack the food get broken particularly the different components let's say protein fat lactose will be broken by the microbial enzymes in the process of their growth and multiplication sometime there will be changes uh, in the appearance of the food or in the color or in the order and that causes the uh, undesirable effect 
and most of this is due to the enzymatic reaction. So microbes has got different kind of enzyme. Those enzyme breaks the constituents or nutrients for their own use for the growth of microbes and leading to decomposition and causing all these undesirable changes. So this is a brief background about the spoilage process in case of milk due to microbial activity. Here we can see the types of spoilage of raw milk. So due to the microbial activity, mainly we are talking about the microbial activity, there can be eight kind of different effect. So they can happen one or the other together. Like most important and common is souring, which is due to the acid production. Then there can be gas production due to other kind of organism like coliforms and others, which we are going to discuss each of them separately. So there can be souring and gas production. Sometimes there can be proteolysis due to enzymatic activity, protein get broken and there will be formation of peptides or it can happen along with other changes. There can be ropiness. So here milk becomes like a string. We will discuss separately in details. There can be changes in milk fat. So lipid can be broken. There can be lipolysis or lipid oxidation. There can be alkali production. There can be different kind of flavor changes due to the microbial activity. Different kind of flavor changes can happen and also color changes can happen due to the pigment formation, due to the growth of microbes. It can change the color due to the nature of those particular organisms. So we are going to talk all these eight different changes in this lecture for the spoilage of milk. I have already mentioned different kind of changes or spoilage that can happen raw milk or even other marketed uh, liquid milk. So here we will see one by one. The first one is the souring. When milk sours, it usually is considered as spoiled, especially if it curdles. So the evidences of acid formation are first a sour flavor will come and then coagulation of milk which produces a so solid jelly like curd or a weaker curd that releases clear way. So these are the common evidence of souring due to microbial growth. This lactic acid fermentation mostly takes place in raw milk held at room temperature more than three hours. Whereas in case of heated milk or pasteurized milk, this won't happen so quickly. Then we will see the next. Here we will see the bacteria involved in souring. That is in two categories we will see. One is at temperature 10 to 37 degrees Celsius in which the major is Streptococcus lactis. That's the main bacteria to cause souring with possibly some growth of coliform bacteria and enterococci, lactobacilli and micrococci. At higher temperature at 37 to 50 degrees Celsius we can say thermophiles. So here main is the Streptococcus thermophilus and Streptococcus faecalis. They may produce up to 1% acid and be followed by the lactobacilli such as Lactobacillus bulgaricus which will produce more acid. But there will be little formation of acid when the milk is held at a temperature near freezing. But proteolysis may take place slowly. So these are the important microbes further we will see next. So in continuation of bacteria involved in souring in case of pasteurized milk. Here what happens most of the common acid producing bacteria will be destroyed due to the heat treatment during pasteurization. However, some of the heat resistant lactics can survive. So those are like enterococci, streptococcus, thermophilus and lactobacilli. They can cause the lactic acid fermentation if the subsequent storage temperature is quite high or suitable. Whereas in case of conditions unfavorable for lactics, when the suitable temperature is not available for these lactic organisms, then other organisms can grow and produce acid like coliform bacteria produce some lactic acid and they produce considerable amount of volatile products such as hydrogen, carbon dioxide, acetic acid, formic acid and alcohol. So this kind of changes can happen when other lactics cannot grow. So in continuation of souring by bacteria, there are some more species which can cause acidity like Micrococcus, Microbacteria and Bacillus species. They can produce acid in milk, mostly lactic acid, 
but cannot compete with lactics under ordinary conditions. So other lactic producing bacteria, if they cannot grow in a normal situation, then these organisms can grow and produce some lactic acid. Similarly, butyric acid in milk may be produced by Clostridium species. Mostly it needs anaerobic condition. This is anaerobic bacteria under conditions that prevent or inhibit the normal lactic acid formation. So if there is no oxygen, normal lactic acid group of organism cannot grow, then Clostridium can grow and it can produce some acidity by producing butyric acid. Here is the second kind of changes or spoilage of milk that is the gas production. Gas production in milk is usually accompanied by acid formation. So there will be both acid formation and gas production. The main gas producing organisms are coliform bacteria, Clostridium species which is anaerobic and gas producing bacillus. So this group produces both hydrogen and carbon dioxide. Whereas there is another group that is the yeasts that another is propionics or propiony bacteria and heterofermentative lactic. So some group of lactic uh, bacteria which is heterofermentative. So they produce only carbon dioxide gas. These are the main gas producing organism. Further we will see the next. In continuation about gas production, the production of gas in milk is evidenced by foam at the top if milk is in liquid and is super saturated with the gas. In card, gas bubbles are caught inside the card and in floating card, gas bubbles are also visible. Sometimes there is ripping apart of card by rapid gas production, which is known as stormy fermentation and is caused by species of bacillus. So this is a huge kind of fermentation leading to huge acidity and it can make card and break, in, break up the card. So that's called stormy fermentation. So in continuation to gas production, the cheap gas farmers are killed in milk heated at pasteurizing temperature or above. So earlier what I told that is mostly in case of raw milk. Whereas in case of pasteurized milk, most of these main gas producing organism will be destroyed. Whereas the spores of Clostridium and Bacillus, they may survive during pasteurization. And gas formation by these spore farmers may take place. So that is the condition in case of pasteurized milk, there can be survival of spores of Clostridium and Bacillus and they can cause gas production. Now about the third kind of changes or spoilage in milk and milk products that is proteolysis. So this is a hydrolysis of milk proteins by microorganisms usually is accompanied by the production of bitter flavor caused by some of the peptides released. So due to the microbial growth, it will have specific proteolytic enzymes which breaks the protein and produces peptides and sometimes these peptides can give bitter flavor. So this proteolysis is favored by storage at lower temperature. When it is stored at lower temperature, most of the other organism cannot grow and then this proteolytic bacteria can grow. Secondly, when destruction of lactics and other acid formers are happening by the heat. So due to heat treatment, some lactic acid bacteria and other acid producing uh, bacteria will be destroyed, then this kind of proteolytic organism can grow and cause proteolysis. Thirdly, due to destruction or utilization of formed acid by molds and yeasts. Sometimes the acid is utilized or destroyed by yeast and mold that leads to the growth of this proteolytic organism. And uh, finally, the neutralization of acid by products of other organisms. So the metabolites of other organisms can neutralize the acidity. Then these organisms can grow. These organisms which can break the protein mostly, they are called proteolytic organisms. Here we will see the types of changes by proteolytic organisms. So firstly, there can be acid proteolysis. There will be acid production and proteolysis. There can be proteolysis with little acidity or even sometime with alkalinity. Sometime there will be sweet curdling that is no acidity will be there but curdling will happen. Sometimes slow proteolysis by intracellular enzymes of bacteria after their autolysis. 
and finally there can be residual proteolytic activity of heat stable proteinase though the the proteolytic bacteria will be destroyed but some enzyme will survive the heat treatment and they can cause proteolytic activity so these are the changes due to proteolytic organisms which we are going to learn next now first we will talk about acid proteolysis so there will be acid production and proteolysis occur together Acid proteolysis causes the production of the shrunken curd. The curd will shrink with much weight. This is followed by a slow digestion of curd, resulting in complete dissolve of curd. Acid proteolysis is caused by several species of Micrococcus, mainly, and other bacteria include Streptococcus liquefaciens and Bacillus species. Bacillus species can survive pasteurization and even a more rigorous heat treatment of milk and that can cause acid proteolysis. So this species is heat tolerant and sometimes we call thermoduric bacteria. So they can cause more proteolysis in heat treated milk. Now proteolysis with little acidity or alkalinity. In such cases, very little acidity is produced. Afterwards, the milk becomes alkaline from the products of protein decomposition. So acidity will be very less and sometime even there will be alkalinity. So sometime there is sweet cuddling. This is caused by renin-like enzymes of the bacteria Bacillus cereus at an early stage of proteolysis. So in this case there is no acid production. So the milk will not be sour. It will be like sweet but there is cuddling. So this is mainly due to the growth of Bacillus cereus which produces proteolytic enzymes particularly renin like enzymes and that cause curdling of milk. So that's called sweet curdling. Slow proteolysis by intracellular enzymes of bacteria. This is not significant in milk under ordinary circumstances but is significant when a long time is allowed for their action as in case of curing of cheese. So cheese is kept for long time for curing there this kind of proteolysis can happen or other product when it is stored for long time. So there will be slow growth and leading to proteolysis. There is another type that is residual proteolytic activity of the heat stable proteinase that is the enzyme. So in this case Pseudomonas fluorescens which produces a proteinase that is an enzyme that will survive pasteurization even though the bacteria may die. So the bacteria may die with the heat treatment but their enzyme will survive and that can cause some kind of proteolysis. Here is about the bacteria involved in proteolysis. Actively proteolytic species of bacteria are found among the genera of Micrococcus, Alkaligenes, Pseudomonas, Proteus, Flavobacterium and Ceresia. All of these are non-spore forming bacteria. Whereas spore forming bacteria of the genera Bacillus and Clostridium have some species which are proteolytic. Some of the species of this Micrococcus, Pseudomonas, Alkaligenes, Flavobacterium and Bacillus can grow at low temperature and can cause proteolysis and or bitterness of milk when the milk is kept at chilling temperature. So some of the species are to some extent psychrophilic or psychrotrops, they can grow slowly and cause proteolysis and changes in the flavor also. Here is another kind of undesirable changes or spoilage of milk that is ropiness. Ropiness or slipiness occur in milk, cream or whey but are important mostly in market milk and cream and this ropiness leads to a kind of string formation when we try to lip the milk and this can be by two ways or two kinds. One is non-bacterial ropiness, another is bacterial ropiness which we are going to see next. First let us understand non-bacterial ropiness. Non-bacterial ropiness may be due to stringiness caused by mastitis and in particular by fibrin and leukocytes from the cow's blood. So in mastitis infection, sometimes the fibrin is a protein of blood and the white blood cells can come from the blood to the milk and they can behave like a ropiness. The next is sliminess resulting from thickness of cream. In case of 
bottle in the top so sometimes it is not so uh, problematic for consumption and then stringiness due to thin films of casein or lactalbumin during cooling observed sometimes on surface cooler this effect is also temporary and not so difficult or uh, prevented for consumption here is about bacterial ropiness bacterial ropiness is caused by slimy capsular material usually gums and mucins produced from the bacterial cells and mostly develops best at low storage temperature surface ropiness is caused by alkali genes viscolactis and other micrococcus species also can cause surface ropiness but this alkali genes viscolactis is most important and common cause of surface ropiness ropiness throughout the milk is caused by enterobacter aerogenes enterobacter cloacae and rarely by escherichia coli lactobacillus casei and lactobacillus plantarum occasionally produce ropiness in milk so these are about the bacterial ropiness of which the surface ropiness is most important caused by alkali genes viscolactis now changes in milk fat during the microbial growth so that's a kind of undesirable effect so this can be due to oxidation to the unsaturated fatty acid as you know there are several unsaturated fatty acid in the milk and it can be due to hydrolysis of the fat that is due to the breakdown of fatty acid from the glycerol so normally the lipids are present as triglycerides in which different fatty acids are connected as ester with the glycerol so sometime three molecules of fatty acid is connected with glycerol and that's why it is called triglycerides sometime there will be combined effect of oxidation and hydrolysis and both together it produces very offensive smell and then we call it rancidity so this can be by two ways one is oxidative another is hydrolytic which we are going to see little more details later so in case of oxidative there is a oxidation to the unsaturated fatty acid in in of hydrolytic rancidity the fatty acid is broken from the ester linkage and free fatty acids are produced and that causes some of odor or smell here is a comparison between hydrolytic and oxidative rancidity in case of oxidative rancidity oxidation of the fatty acid chain mainly carbon carbon double bonds in unsaturated fatty acid get affected and it is catalyzed by light heat enzymes trace metals and free radicals so many trace elements particularly copper can act as uh, pro oxidant even light also sometimes salt and the end product will be the unpleasant smell in case of hydrolytic rancidity i have already mentioned the fatty acid is separated from the glycerol and catalyzed by heat enzymes and moisture mostly it is due to the lipolytic enzymes from bacteria and those bacteria are called as lipolytic bacteria and the enzymes are called as lipase enzymes here we will see little bit more about the chemistry of this rancidity both oxidative and hydrolytic in case of oxidative rancidity you can see in the diagram there are unsaturated fatty acids connected with glycerol and present in triglycerides so these unsaturated bonds are always susceptible to oxidation either by due to the presence of oxygen or due to the auto oxidation so ultimately this oxidation process produces hydroperoxides and these hydroperoxides further produces the free radicals and leading to a chain reaction and produces several compounds of, of volatile aldehyde ketones etc and many time that is the cause for undesirable odor or flavor in case of hydrolytic rancidity as i have mentioned there is glycerol connected with three fatty acid so due to the bacterial growth and multiplication especially the lipolytic bacteria they are having large amount of lipase enzyme this lipase enzyme will break the ester linkage that is the linkage of hydroxyl group and the carboxyl group of the fatty acid so because of that this fatty acid will be released and large amount of free fatty acid will be produced that causes the undesirable odor or flavor so here is what happens in case of milk fat the oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids 
it oxidation produces aldehydes acids and ketones and results in tallowy order and tests the reaction is favored by metals sunlight they are also called as prooxidant and other oxidizing microorganisms in case of hydrolysis of milk fat or butter fat so hydrolysis of the butter fat to fatty acids and glycerol is caused by the enzyme lipase this lipase can be normally present in milk and if it is not inactivated by heat treatment then it will have its activity or it may come from the microbial growth especially the lipolytic bacteria will have lipase enzyme and that can break these fatty acids here is the combined oxidation and hydrolysis leading to rancidity the lipase forming species of bacteria that is pseudomonas alkaligenes proteus bacillus and micrococcus many of the molds and some species of yeasts are also lipolytic so these are the organism which are mainly responsible for lipolytic activity in milk fat or milk products and others are like pseudomonas fragi and staphylococcus aureus they produce fairly heat resistant lipases which can survive pasteurization if present in the raw milk so this i told in case of proteage also or proteinage some proteinage can survive the heat treatment here some lipase can survive the heat treatment and they can cause hydrolysis in lipid so both oxidation and hydrolysis can cause the rancidity another kind of changes in milk that is alkali production so the alkali forming bacteria cause an alkaline reaction in milk without any evidence of proteolysis so they will cause alkali production the alkaline reaction may result from the production of ammonia from the urea or carbonates from organic acids like citric acid so due to the production of ammonia and other carbonates there will be alkali production most of these bacteria grow in moderate to low temperature the examples are pseudomonas fluorescens as i told this is one of the most common spoilage organism even it can grow at low temperature and the alkaligenes viscolactis which we have mentioned the main cause of surface ropiness so here also we told that it is a sweet curdling that is there is no acid production or sometime there can be alkali production now there is flavor changes due to the microbial growth the undesirable changes occurs in the desirable flavor so first one is sour or acid flavor clean and aromatic acid flavors are desirable in fermented milk products whereas sharp and acid flavor is undesirable so why this sharp and acid flavor it is due to the production of volatile acids such as formic acid acetic acid or butyric acid and mainly produced by coliforms bacteria and sometime clostridium that's a anaerobic bacteria and some other bacteria so these bacteria can produce certain volatile acids and causing very sharp and acid flavor which is undesirable then another undesirable flavor that is the bitter flavor it is mainly due to proteolysis but may be due to sometime lipolysis also in proteolysis the small peptides will be produced which give the off flavor or bitter flavor besides proteolytic and lipolytic bacteria certain strains of coliform and a yeast asporogenous yeast they also can cause bitterness in milk some cocci cause very bitter milk and actinomycetes sometimes give bitter musty flavor there is another one called burnt or caramel flavor this is produced by streptococcus lactis their variant is multigenes so streptococcus lactis variant multigenes sometime can cause burnt or caramel flavor here is some more different kind of flavor changes in milk due to the growth of different kind of microorganisms like barney flavor due to enterobacter oxytocum soapiness flavor due to ammonia forming organism like pseudomonas sapolactica fruity flavor due to pseudomonas fragi then potato like flavor caused by pseudomonas mucido lens and the fishy odor or fishiness that is due to aeromonas hydrophila 
So these are some of the uncommon miscellaneous kind of flavor changes in milk. Now the last one that is the undesirable changes or spoilage of milk that is the color changes. Color changes in milk is due to surface growth of pigmented bacteria or molds in the form of ring or scum or it may be throughout the milk. So some of these bacteria or molds when they grow they produce some pigment and that pigment gives a color change to the milk or even in milk products. Sometime their colony also will be colorful and that make a change in the product color change. Pseudomonas syncyania that produces a bluish gray to brownish color in milk in pure culture. But when growing with an acid former like Streptococcus lactis, it causes a deep blue color. So Pseudomonas syncyania alone means it will be bluish gray or brownish. But when Streptococcus lactis is there, it will produce blue color in milk. Here is different kind of color changes and their cause the kind of organisms involved. In case of blue milk, Pseudomonas syncyania. In yellow milk, Pseudomonas zinzantha. In red milk, Ceresia marcescens. In red layer at the top of milk, Brevibacterium erythrogens, red sediment sometime we will see in the milk that is caused by Micrococcus roseas, and then sometime pink or red colonies on the surface of sour milk or cream that is caused by yeast Torula glutinis. Then there is brown milk that is caused by Pseudomonas putrefaciens. So these are the different kind of color changes happen in case of milk and the causative organism for that. Here we will discuss some of the important aspects for spoilage of pasteurized milk. The spoilage of pasteurized milk depends on the bacteria that survive pasteurization. That is the thermodurix, some organism which can tolerate that heat treatment and some spore formers. They can easily form spore and escape the heat treatment. The bacteria that enter the milk after pasteurization that is we call post pasteurization contamination or in case of other product we call post processing contamination. That can happen from the equipments, from the filling operation, from the packaging materials or other vessels and utensils and that contamination can cause spoilage in pasteurized milk. In fact in other products also in the same way. The possible presence of heat resistant residual microbial enzymes. I mentioned it earlier that some organism may die due to the heat treatment but they produce some enzymes which are heat tolerant or heat resistant, some proteinase or some lipases. So they can cause undesirable changes in pasteurized milk or processed food. The temperature of storage which is most important parameter decides which organism will predominate. So generally we will store the pasteurized milk in cold in refrigerator but even then as I said some organism which are heat tolerant they might have escaped their heat treatment or some spore formers so they can grow or sometime the heat tolerant enzymes. So most of the spore forming cyclotrops or bacilli can grow and cause spoilage in pasteurized milk. So here we have summarized some of the important and common changes in milk and their causative or organism and their signs of spoilage. It is particularly for milk. So souring caused by lactobacillus species and streptococcus and the signs of spoilage are sour milk card formation, sweet curdling by bacillus proteus and micrococcus. It will produce alkali sometime and pH will be going up and card formation. Then gas production by Clostridium and coliform bacteria. There will be the bulging of card or explosion. There will be ropiness caused by alkaligenes, Klebsiella, Enterobacter. It may cause string formation or slimy milk or sliminess. Then red rot caused by Ceresia marcescens. It will cause red coloration. Gray rot by Clostridium species which is again a a anaerobic organism causes grey coloration or foul smell. All anaerobic organism can cause foul smell. Then dairy mold, penicillium species and geotrichum species. 
they are very common and they can cause moldy appearance so these are some of the common spoilage and their organisms in brief so now i will summarize the whole lecture today today we have discussed uh, the first part in the spoilage of milk and milk products in this first part we have discussed mainly about the spoilage of milk and initially the basic and general aspect of spoilage so i have discussed what is spoilage how it happens what is the process what is the chemical changes happens and mostly the microorganism play important role and how they make undesirable changes and in the second part i have discussed different kind of spoilage or undesirable changes happening in case of milk in brief and in every cases i have highlighted some of the important organisms which are responsible for them and finally i have listed and summarized some of the important uh, spoilage and their corresponding causative organisms so hope it will be all right now in the part 2 of this same topic i will cover about the spoilage of dairy products so this particular lecture may be a little bit long for the undergraduate students but it will be fully uh, uh, suitable for all postgraduate students for food technology dairy technology or livestock products technology for ug students may be some portions are more important than the rest thank you